Hey guys, this is Benjamin with Benjamin's Exotics, and today I'm going to try to, or kind of do a, almost part two to the other Leopard Gecko uh, care and setup guide that I already did, but the other one was talking about, you know, more in a breeder type setup, or more of a simplistic setup, um, and it was pretty basic, uh, but it still had some good information, I thought at least, uh, it was basically just, you know, tub, paper towel, heat pad, all the basics. Talked about food and different things like that. This is going to go more in depth, talking about how we set up, or how people, you know, how I think you should set up and how I've been setting up. The Brigetco uh, cages or, you know, terrariums, ovariums, whatever you want to call But we're going to be using a tank. We're going to talk about different substrates. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. This is going to be a much more detailed video than the last one, but... I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you guys get some good information out of this. So, let's get right into it. First of all, when we're looking at a tank, there's basically, now we have two, kind of two ways that we can heat this thing, or this enclosure for a leopard gecko. Let's look at the first one, and this is the one I prefer, basically using a heat mat, uh, or a heat pad, heat tape, heat strip, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know what we're talking about. So, all this does is, if you don't know, it's like, um, you ever seen, you know, uh, people, they get cramps and stuff, they use those heat pads and heat mats to, uh, help their cramps or pains get better, this is basically the same thing as that. Now, you're going to want to have this regulated on some type of, um, thermometer, because if you don't, these will get about, from what I've seen, about 85 to 90 degrees, they don't really go in anywhere past that, but, you know, there is a range, so, with your animals, you want to be basically as pinpoint accurate as possible so you don't want to have a heat pad that you know well half the time it's at 80 half the time it's at 95 you don't want something like that so you're going to want to get something to regulate this simple thermostat would do fine so all we're going to do is you have two options for this personally uh the safer option and the option that i prefer is taking this and just sticking it underneath of the tank so it's just going to go on the bottom and it's going to heat the glass up and that heat's going to rise into the enclosure right you could always just stick that in there, not like that of course, but you could <laughs> always just stick that in there and that would heat the bottom inside the tank and that would probably be a little bit um, better because it would keep the heat more accurate and closer to the gecko, but mm, if, it over, if it ever overheated, I think you'd have a lot more problems. So if it was me, i just put it on the bottom, but I have put it in the cage before and I haven't had any problems. That being said... I've only had one leopard gecko that I've really spent a lot of time and dedication on, not a bunch, so uh, if it was me, I'd do the safer option. So, number two, and probably what I should have said at the beginning, we're going to look at substrate, first of all. What goes on the bottom? We already have our heating, now let's look at some substrates. When you're doing a tank, this thing, you know, it's not heavy, but a tub is a lot easier to clean out than something like this. So, for me, geckos are not like snakes. So, when they go to the bathroom, let me actually show you. This is a used is cage. You see that? Sorry if it echoes, but you see that little white piece of something right there? And then you see that right there? And I don't I think that's the only two pieces of stuff in here. That's how big a gecko's waist is. That little white dot compared to the whole cage. That little white dot and some of that. That's their waist, okay? It's not like a snake where it can be, you know, as big as a dog's waist, you know. It's a little bit of a weird to talk, uh, subject to talk about, but when you're looking at this, uh, and you're in a tank, I don't want to have to, with newspaper, every time it goes to the bathroom, take the whole thing out. So with this, literally, it can go to the bathroom, you can get a paper towel or a disposable glove, whatever, or use your hands, I don't, but, you know, whatever you want to do, and just take that little piece and that little piece and scoop it out. This thing could literally last you six months... I don't want to say a year, but realistically, yeah, this thing, this bedding could last a very, very long time in this, and you never have to clean it out, so this makes it very low maintenance. I wouldn't do this kind of setup for a snake. I mean, actually, you know what, this bedding is great. We're using EcoEarth, by the way, if I didn't already tell you. Um, I, you can use this for a snake, but, you know, with a snake... You, every time it goes to the bathroom, you have to take like that much of the bedding out. So actually, this saying this right now, this does work great for ball pythons. But so what we're gonna go with in this video is just Eco Earth. Uh, it's what I use in the little things like this, the humid hides. You know, you just pick these up from the dollar store and melt a 
hole in the front of them for the gecko to climb in and out of. But that's what I use in here because it keeps humidity, but this stuff in here is dry. Uh, now, one problem you might find is is that you do get it from a brick, so you might have to put it out in the sun to heat it up and have the moisture evaporate because you don't want it wet inside this enclosure. So, after we've had heating and substrate, actually, I'm going to talk about one more heat feeding element real quickly. So, we talked about the heat pad. I'm sorry I'm jumping around a little bit, but we're going to do our bedding, EcoEarth, right? Heating, heat pad's a good option. Here's an option that um, some people do. I've seen it done successfully. I've actually done it a little bit. But I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm not hugely knowledgeable. And that would be heating through, this is too big for this tank obviously, but this is heating through a light, right? In my opinion, if you're going to do something like this, you're going to have to have a decorated, to a very good extent, cage. What do I mean by this? You can't have a breeder setup kind of cage or a basic kind of cage. Like with this, if you were going to have this cage, water bowl, and then just this as your hide and water source, or I mean food bowl, sorry, and this is your hide and water source, one of these, which has a gecko in it right now, you don't want to have a light on there, because the gecko has no way to escape from that. So, what we're about to show you in a second is something that might be, in my opinion, more uh, doable, or it might have a better potential to be able to use lighting, either for heating or just to look cool. Again, leopard geckos, if I haven't already said, they do not need UVB. So, after we've had... Heating, I just go with the heat pad, could do a light, but as I showed you, and as I will show you in a little bit, you're going to have to do some extra if you're going to use a light, and substrate. Now let's look at, uh, real quick, food bowl, very simple, mealworms, calcium powder, done. We'll just set that right there, and the mealworms, they do get out and kind of get in this stuff if you don't have a tall enough thing, so I do, they never get out of mine, but just be wary of that. Now, we have to put in our humid hide, because leopard geckos basically always need a humid hide. You could just spray it down, but I don't like doing that in a substrate that I want to stay there for months and months and months and possibly years. So, you have two options when you're doing your substrate. You have something like this, with this little leopard gecko in here. Uh, vermiculite. Now, you could do vermiculite or perlite. I think vermiculite's better uh, in terms of holding humidity in an environment like this. But, you know, perlite would also do, and it, vermiculite's what I use for the first year or so. But, as you can see, and I hope she doesn't try to get out of there, when you look at the vermiculite in here, the gecko sometimes kick it out, and that's what all this little pieces of things are, right? So, I don't like using uh, vermiculite too much in an environment like this. So, personally, if you're going to go with this kind of route with EcoEarth, which I recommend... I would do something like this, just eco-earth in this. You only have to clean it out, you know, every month or so. You could probably let it go on longer, but I always do it every month. Very simple, dump it out, put some more fresh stuff in, keep it moist, keep the humidity up in here, and you're good to go. So we're going to set that guy right in there, and then we'll let the gecko run around since we just got the setup done. Or, you know, I've talked about the main things. So we'll take her real quick, and this is a rescuous animal we've got. So she'll go right in there, and she'll run around and stuff. So we've got, this is basically all you need, to be honest, in something like this. But since it's an aquarium, and this, since this could be something like display, we're going to add a little bit more. So we have our food, water, hiding spot, and heat. You're basically done. Now we're going to add extra stuff. Let's say you want a light, right? If it was me, I'd set the heat pad right over here so it'll heat this up to make it more humid. Um, and also, because we have our th uh, thermometer right here, you can't read it, but it's got a just Velcro. I think it's by like Zoomed or something like that. Yeah, Zoomed. So what I'll do for this is I'm going to also take these little logs right here, cork flats. They're a few bucks at your dollar store. Or, sorry, they're a few bucks at your like plant store or something like that, or you can get them at the reptile you know, stores, like, you know, whatever, the pet stores, but they're usually a bit more pricey there, but they're probably safer, so I'd probably get them there, but we're going to lay this right along here, um, just so when you look at this, she has a little bit more, she can walk out, she can get up here, not basking, well, actually, yeah, it would be basking if you had a light, and since the heat pad's under here, if she gets too cold, this is going to create a nice bubble of warm air underneath of this. So, also, if you're doing lights, you know, you don't just want to have one on the warm side because if the light's going out on there and she wants to get away from the light, but she doesn't want to also be warm, she needs to have another option. So, we're going to look at a cool side 
hide. So you can do something simple like this. I'll move this around a little bit actually. We'll put the food dish right there. Just something that she can hide, get away from the light, if you do something like that. Uh, and basically it's on the cool side, so if she wants to be cool and she wants to be away from the light, there's uh, your option right there. Now this is basically all I would do. You can put some plants in and that would also be beneficial to a certain degree. But as we've said, lights are kind of touchy. Some people say you shouldn't do them. Some people say you should. I've personally used them a little bit. Um, normally I don't recommend lights at all. But you know what? In the wild, they do have lights. There is the sun. But what's the people's argument to that? Yeah, there's the sun, but they're hiding all day, and that's why we do this. We have this here so they can get away from the light and be warm, and this so they can get away from the light and be cooler or colder. Okay, because if they start to overheat, but they also want to be out of the light, I'd much rather have them have that option. Spend a little bit more and have that option than have a gecko overheat or be stressed out and have problems because of the light. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Very basic. Uh, I'll give you one last shot of her before I end the video. But this is how I would do something like this. You can always add backgrounds and plants, and that's nothing uh, major. But if you're going to do anything like a light, which, you know, I kind of recommend, but not really. Um, to simplify it, I would just say heat pad. But if you're going to do a light, you have to do something like this. So I'll give you one last shot of her. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you guys a little bit. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. And I'll show you one last shot of her. Oh, and she's not in here. What am I doing? She's right beside here. She's got a little bit of uh, problems with her tail and her spine and stuff like that. But besides that, I think she's pretty happy in her current cage right now.